Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Uh, I'm continuing talking about circles and uh, proving certain theorems about uh, circles. Um, you might have noticed I call this particular lecture theorem number one, not mini theorem something. Um, now, why? Because primarily mini theorems are those which can be just proven in three, four uh, statements. These are just a little bit more complex, not by, not by much, just a little bit. Uh, some of them, which I will present here, will seem to be a little bit simpler, but there is one or two theorems which might actually be a little bit more complex, and that's why I decided to call this theorem as a more kind of a complicated or sophisticated, if you wish, uh, theorems. So anyway, uh, let me get to these theorems. Number one, given two chords of equal lengths crossing each other in the same circle and divided by a point of intersection in two unequal segments each, short and long. So we have two chords of equal lengths. Now, that's not exactly equal lengths. Let's assume these will be equal lengths, hopefully. All right. Prove that short segment of one chord is congruent to a short segment of another. So we have to prove that these uh, short segments are congruent and the long segments are congruent, provided the lengths of chords is the same. Uh, well, that's actually kind of a mini theorems. I probably should have put it in a different category, but still. Uh, now, uh, obviously, if you have chords, the best way is to draw perpendiculars to these chords from the center. Um, now, uh, obviously, these triangles will be congruent because the radiuses are hypotenuses and these two cachet AM and ND are half of the chords and chords are equal in length so the halves are equal as well. Now similarly um, if you connect these two guys this, if you can consider these two triangles, MPN, uh, MPO and NPO, these two small triangles, they are also congruent because, as we know, OM and ON are congruent. These are part of the congruent bigger triangles. And OP is shared and they are right triangles so they are congruent as well which means these little segments MP and NP are congruent so what remains is basically uh, CP and BP these two must be congruent because these two parts of the congruent chords uh, have the same lengths. So that's it. Yeah, this actually doesn't deserve to be called a theorem. This is really a mini theorem, but still. Uh, there will be a, well, one or two a little bit more complicated problems here. Okay, number two. Two circles intersect at points A and B. A second is drawn from A uh, intersecting at C and D. Okay. So you have two circles, not necessarily the same uh, radius. Uh, intersection points are A and B. And we draw a second which intersects 
at C and D. Prove the measure of C, B, D. C, B, D. Prove that measure of angle C, B, D doesn't depend on the position of the second C, D as long as it goes through the point A. Okay. Um, all right, consider this triangle B, C, D. Angle BCD is supported by this arc. And no matter how we position the point C, let's say it's this way, C prime, D prime, and connect it again the same way. So no matter how we position the point C, this angle will still be the same and it will be supported by the same arc. Because this is an inscribed angle and it's always equal half of the central angle which is supported by the same arc. So this angle is, is constant. Same thing as this one. This is supported by this arc and it's always half of the central angle, which is also supported by this arc. Which means these two, both these two angles are constant regardless of whether we draw a second this way or this way. And since the sum of the angles in a triangle is always 180 degree, what it implies is that this angle, which is equal to 180 minus this and minus this, is also constant regardless of the position of the second. That's it. Next. Two circles with centers at points K and L are tangent to each other at point M. So again, two circles, but in this case, they are tangent to each other. So this is K, this is L, and this is M, and as you know, the tangent, um, the, the line of, uh, between the centers always passing through the point of tangency between two circles, if they are tangent. Okay. Um, two seconds intersecting both circles are drawn through the point M. Okay, one is this way from A through M to B. And another from C through M to D. Okay. Prove that chords AC in the first and BD in the second circle are parallel to each other. So these two lines, these two chords, are parallel to each other. Okay. How can we prove that? <laughs> well, since this is uh, the point of tangency, we can always consider the tangent line, which is common for both, and it's perpendicular to uh, the central line. So let's call it L. Okay. Now, um, now, how 
can we prove that? Well, let's just think about what can be actually said about all these angles. Now, these are obviously vertical and therefore congruent to each other, as well as these two angles. Okay, that's given. What else? Okay, I do remember that angles formed by All right, let's just consider these triangles. Since AKM is an isosceles triangle, these are two bases, base angles. AM is a basis, KA and KM are radiuses, they are congruent to each other. Similarly, this triangle is also LMB, is also isosceles. Therefore, these angles are the same. So, as a result, we have that these two angles must be the same because this is 180 minus these two and this one is also 180 minus these two since these are vertical these angles are equal now this is a central angle and this is a central angle and this one is an inscribed angle which is supported by the same arc. So AM is an arc, so ACM angle equals half of this. And uh, BGM inscribed angle equals half of this central angle. Which means ACD and BGC angles are congruent to each other and that's why considering CG is a transversal and these AC and BG are two lines angles which I was just talking about are um, interior alternate right they are interior between the lines and they are alternate because they are on both sides of the transversal so again lines are AC and BG these, these are lines which we have to prove the parallelism of. The transversal is CG, and these two angles are uh, interior, alternate interior angles. And since they are congruent to each other, the lines are parallel, as we know from the theory of the parallel lines and transversal. 
Right, so we don't really need this. Common tangent. Everything is just uh, proved from uh, congruence of the central angles, therefore congruence of um, inscribed angles. Yeah, you see, I was actually thinking about this a little bit. Um, so that's why this is a theorem and not mini theorem, but I don't have to think at all. All right. Let's move on. Two circles with centers in points K and L are tangent to, uh, to each other, so it looks like it's the same uh, kind of a picture. K and L, and they go through point M. Okay, and probably we need this as well, as usually. If two circles are tangent, most likely the central line will be needed. A second intersecting both circles is drawn from A through M to point B in the second one. All right, so we have a second from A to B. Now, we draw two tangents. Here tangent at A, and here tangent at B. And we have to prove that they are parallel. Well, um, let's do ex exactly the same thing. So we connect these two points. So we definitely know that these angles we have proven in the, in the previous theorem that these two angles are congruent to each other. It follows from the congruency of these vertical angles and the fact that these are isosceles triangles. All right? So we have these angles equal to each other, which proves what? Which proves basically that AK and LB are parallel to each other because AK and LB are two lines KL is a transversal and since these angles which are uh, again alternate interior are equal to each other that proves the parallelism of uh, the lines but now these lines these two radiuses are perpendicular to two tangents since these are parallel, then the perpendicular two parallel lines are parallel among themselves. So that proves the parallelism of two tangents. Okay? Okay, that's done. Next one. If in any triangle, bases of three altitudes are connected to form a new triangle, then these altitudes will be angle bisectors in the new triangle. I see. That's actually a very interesting problem, um, and probably that's why I called the whole uh, lecture theorems rather than mini-theorems, because this seems to be um, a little bit just a little bit more complicated. So you have a triangle, and you have three bisector, uh, sorry, three uh, altitudes. Now, here is the question. What happens if I connect the bases? these altitudes. The theorem states that in this new triangle, let me put letters on it, triangle ABC, bases R, M, N, P. So in the new triangle, M, N, P, the old um, 
altitudes will be angle bisectors. Well, again, this is kind of unusual and I would say unexpected theorem, and that's what makes it actually very interesting. Um, personally, when I first time saw this type of a theorem, I was a little bit surprised. Well, it's interesting, you know, if you connect them, um, if you connect the bases, it will be a new triangle, and, uh, and, uh, and the altitudes will be uh, angle bisectors. So you do not expect this type of uh, a theorem. That's why it makes it, it, makes it really um, interesting, um, and interesting to prove, actually. All right, so how can we prove that? Um, let's think about this way. You know that if you draw a circle around right triangle, then the center of this uh, circle will be the midpoint of a hypotenuse, and the hypotenuse itself will be a diameter. And any right triangle which shares the same hypotenuse would be inscribed in this circle. So hypotenuse defines basically uh, and in the center of the hypotenuse and uh, a circle around it using this as a diameter defines uh, the locus of all points which if connected to these two ends would form right triangle. So all right triangles which share the same hypotenuse lie on the same circle. Now we definitely know this and the question is, how can we use it? Well, simply, consider AC as a hypotenuse and two triangles, AMC, it's a right angle, right? It's an altitude, and APC. So this is a circle, if we will draw it, and both P and M will lie on this uh, circle. Well, let me just use maybe almost some other color. I'll try to do it as accurately as I can so it will be visible. All right, so this is a circle, in this case it's half a circle, where AC is a diameter. That's why AMC triangle will be inscribed into the circle as well as APC. And now let's consider um, angles which are supported by the same arc. Well, let's look at the arc MP. Now, obviously, inscribed angle PAM, this one, and PCM are supported by the same arc. Again, this angle and this angle both are supported by this arc. Now, both are inscribed angles, both are equal to a half of the central angle, which is supported by the same arc, which means they are congruent to each other. Okay? We got that. Now, let me wipe this out, erasing this old circle so it doesn't really bother us anymore, because we will draw another one. We have three altitudes, right? So we can have three different hypotenuses. Now, let's consider the side BC as a hypotenuse and triangle BNC as well as BPC sharing this as a hypotenuse. So B, uh, BPN and C will be lying in the same circle. Right? Now, let's consider these angles. Again, sharing exactly the same uh, uh, the same arc. Well, B, C, P is supported by this arc. And B, N, P also supported by the same arc, which means this is the same angle. So BCP angle and B, 
and P angle are congruent to each other. And finally, the third circle, erase this one. and use AB as uh, a hypotenuse. So triangle BMA, right triangle, and BNA would be inscribed into this circle. So circle will look like this. Right? Now, in this circle, Let's look at this particular arc, BM. This angle, BNM, is inscribed and supported by this. And BAM is also inscribed into the same circle and supported by the same arc. So they are congruent to each other. So this one and this one. And that actually concludes the proof that these two angles are congruent to each other. Because this one and this congruent from the first circle, if you remember, then this and this from the second circle, and this and this from the third circle. So these are congruent to each other. That's why BN is a hypotenuse. Now, what I actually can do is I can repeat exactly the same logic for these two angles and these two angles. I mean, I could have actually done it in the first place for the first circle, not only to specify these two, for instance, angles, uh, uh, congruent to each other, but others as well. Uh, but that would be a little bit too much for one circle. It will be too many different angles. So I decided to concentrate only on these two angles. And this is a proof. That, but the proof is actually very symmetrical, if you notice. One circle, another circle, and the third circle. So we can actually do exactly the same thing for any pair of angles. Um, so that proves that the altitude Altitude is a bisector of a triangle formed by the basis of three altitudes. Interesting and quite frankly, again, for myself, it was um, an unexpected, I would say, theorem. Okay. All right. Given an equilateral triangle, uh, ABC, inscribed into a circle. So there is a circle, and there is a triangle, ABC, inscribed into it. All right. Any point M on a circle O3 vertices to this triangle. So we take any point M here and we connect it with three vertices. So we have this, this, and this. All right. Okay, we have to prove that sum of two shorter uh, connections, AM plus MC, is equal to the long one, BM. So again, triangle ABC is equilateral. Uh, actually, this center point is supposed to be relatively in the center of it, but that doesn't really matter. We don't need really the center point. So we have an equilateral triangle, and we take any point on, let's say, on this particular arc <coughs> between A and C, and connect it with three vertices. And we have to prove that the sum of two shorter uh, connections is equal to one longer one. OK. Now, 
Now, so what do we know about uh, uh, this? We know that this is equilateral triangle, which means that these angles are all 60 degrees, right? Since it's equilateral triangle, they're all 60 degrees. In addition, since angle BMC is supported by the same arc as BAC, this is also 60 degrees, as well as this is 60 degrees. So these are all angles equal to 60 degrees. In this case, BMA and BCA supported by the same arc. Am I right? Now, basically, if we would like to prove that this big segment is equal to some of these two, what I think makes sense is basically to have another equilateral triangle from the point C and M and put the third vertex on the BM. So what, what I will do is I will draw a line here such that this angle is also 60 degrees. Which means that this one will also be 60 degrees, which means this is equilateral triangle. And this particular segment, CM, and let's call this one P, would, would be equal to PM. Since PCM is equilateral triangle, all angles are 60 degrees, so it's equilateral. Now, we know this, and um, so we took this uh, piece, CM, and put it on this particular segment as an MP. What remains to be seen that the remaining lengths, which is BP, is uh, congruent to AM. Now, to do this, we probably have to include it in some kind of a triangle. So, let's think about it. Well, we can consider these two triangles and prove their uh, congruence. BPC and ACM. Let me write it down. triangle B, P, C, and triangle A, M, C. Now, let's think about these two, uh, th these two triangles. B, C is obviously congruent to A, C because ABC is equilateral triangle, right? So we have BC equals to AC. That's number one. What else do we know about this? We also know that PC is congruent to MC. PC is equal to MC. So this is second side. So we have one side congruent to this, and we have another side congruent to this. So the only question actually remains whether the angle between these two 
BC and PC, BC and PC, this angle, is congruent to angle between uh, PC and, C, and, and, and MC, which is this angle. AC and MC. Okay. So in this triangle, And in this triangle, we have side equal to side, another side equal to another side, and the only thing which remains is this angle against this angle. Now, well, actually it's very easy to prove. Why? Because this angle, angle B, C, P, equals 60 degrees minus this one, PCA, minus angle PCA. Now, angle ACM is equal to, again, 60 degrees from the PCM 60 degrees, minus again, exactly the same, angle PCA. So that's why angle BCP and ACM, this one and this one, are congruent to each other. So we have side, angle, side, uh, congruent to side, angle, side. So triangles are congruent, which means AM and B, P are congruent to each other. And that's exactly what remains to be proven, because now A, M being here, and M, C being here, now they are making up one connection from B to M. So the segment B, M is equal to B, P, which is congruent to A, M, plus PM, which is congruent to CM. And that proves the, the, the whole theorem. That's it. Uh, that was the last uh, theorem I wanted to prove. And uh, I hope you agree with me that uh, these are slightly more complex theorems than I uh, used to do before in the category of mini theorems. But they're not really very, very complex. Just maybe a little bit. So thanks very much, and uh, don't forget unizor.com is the site for, for you and for parents and uh, teachers and supervisors who would like to control the educational process of their students. Um, good luck, thank you very much.